Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Elhamdülillahi Rabbil alemin. Ve salatu ve selamu ala şerefil enbiyeyi vel mursalin. Muhammedur Resulullah sallallahu aleyhi ve ala alihi ve sahbihi ve sellem. Teslimen kathiren kathiren. Fama ba'du, this is the third lecture in the series called Fundam- Fun- Focus on the Fundamentals. My brothers and sisters, I want to remind you and myself that Islam is a belief system. You enter Islam by believing and declaring that belief. <clears throat> it is equally simple to leave Islam. That is why it is essential to ensure that we never say or do anything that contradicts or denies our belief. That is why knowledge is important and it begins with fundamentals. Which is why systematically the systematic study of Islam is so important. Learning Islam is not about randomly reading this book or that, including the Quran, but about studying the usul, the principles of deen, and then the usul of whichever discipline of deen you are studying before touching any of the books. Usul al-Tafsir, Usul al-Fiqh, Usul al-Hadith, and so on. Only then can one expect to understand Islam in any depth. Needless to say, a thorough knowledge of classical Arabic is critical to understanding the texts that no translation in any language can do justice to. Then, like in any practice, be it martial arts or medicine or flying a plane, it is living Islam under the supervision of a teacher, which is the foundation of all knowledge. True knowledge comes only and only from practice not from reading theory. Anyone who who truly wants to learn Islam in depth must go the whole way, starting with becoming proficient in Arabic at a native speaker level and then seeking teachers to learn and practice under until he or she is certified as being competent to teach or give their opinion on matters. This is the famous system of Ijazah on which our modern day university education globally and the awarding of degrees is based. It is taken from Islamic scholarly tradition. To illustrate the matter of entering or leaving Islam with a simple example, Salah is a fundamental principle and one of the five pillars of Islam. If someone doesn't pray, He or she is committing a major sin for which they must seek forgiveness. But if a person prays but says that the prayer is not farad, compulsory, but optional, you can pray if you like, if 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 you don't want to pray, it's okay. If a person says that, then that person has left Islam even though he may be praying himself. The same thing applies to everything that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded or prohibited. If a Muslim believes and speaks contrary to that, he or she risks leaving the fold of Islam. It is not just a matter of opinion. If the opinion of a Muslim contradicts or denies what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered or his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa taught, it takes the person out of Islam. He will then have to repent and seek Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's forgiveness and re-enter Islam if he likes, if he wants to. If not, and he dies, then he would have died without Islam, even if he had been doing other prescribed things. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made it clear that selective obedience is disobedience. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Ya ayyuha ladina amanu udkhulu fissilmi kafatan. وَلَا تَطَّبِعُوا خُطُوَاتِ الشَّيْطَانِ إِنَّهُ لَكُمْ عَدُوٌ مُّبِينٌ Allah said, O believers, enter Islam completely and do not follow shaitan's footsteps. Surely he is your sworn enemy. The ayah is addressed to the believers, to us, who already believe, showing that merely saying that we believe is not enough. Belief must be demonstrated in all aspects of life. 
and not as a matter of personal choice. The word Muslim is a verb. It describes someone who is doing something, someone who has submitted to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not someone who knows about Islam no matter how much. A haji, for example, is someone who has done hajj, not the bus driver of the hujjaj. A sa'im is one who fasts, who is fasting, not one who knows about fasting. A musalli is one who is praying, not someone who knows how to pray, but does not pray himself. About selective obedience, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala declared very clearly, أَفَتُؤْمِنُونَ بِبَعْدِ الْكِتَابِ وَتَكْفُرُونَ بِبَعْدِ فَمَا جَزَاءُ مَنْ يَفْعَلُ ذَلِكَ مِنْكُمْ إِلَّا خِزْيٌ فِي الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا وَيَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ يُرَدُّونَ إِلَىٰ أَشَدِّ الْعَذَابِ وَمَا اللَّهُ بِغَافِلٍ عَمَّا تَعْمَلُونَ Do you believe in some of the scripture and reject the rest? Is there any reward for those who do so among you other than disgrace in this worldly life and being subjected to the harshest punishment, Ashaddi Lada, on the day of judgment. For Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is never unaware of what you do. This is our biggest problem today. Muslims want Islam in their choice of flavor. But Islam didn't come in different flavors. There is one Islam. The beauty of Islam is that it is universal and the same for all people everywhere in every era. There is no Arab Islam or American Islam or Desi Islam. There is one Islam and all those who practice it are Muslim and equal before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, distinguished only by the extent to which they are concerned about pleasing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that is by their taqwa. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in Surah Al-Hujurat, إِنَّ أَكْرَمَكُمْ إِنَّ اللَّهِ أَتْقَاكُمْ إِنَّ اللَّهَ عَلِيمٌ خَبِيرٌ Allah said which means surely the most the akram, the most noble of you in the sight of Allah, in the Allah, with Allah, is the most righteous among you, the most muttaqi among you. Allah is truly all-knowing, all-aware. We Muslims are people of action. We are distinguished by what we do. Let us focus on that. What we choose to do or not to do defines brand value and character. Sometimes we believe that we Muslims are held back from progress because we are not allowed to take interest-based loans. Let me try to address this in the only way that matters, which is in the context of the Akhirah. The first thing to get clear in our minds is the meaning of progress and the meaning of success. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala defined success and gave us the metric to measure ourselves to see if we are successful or not. This is the only measurement metric that matters. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Kullu nafsin da'iqatul mawt wa inna ma tuwaffawna ujurakum yawm al-qiyamah faman zuhziha anin nari wa udkhila al-jannata faqad faz wa mal hayatu dunya illa mata'u al-ghurur Allah Jalla Shana who said every soul will taste death everything that lives will die and you will only receive your full reward on the day of judgment whoever is spared from the fire and admitted into Jannah will indeed triumph will indeed be successful whereas the life of this world is no more than the delusion of enjoyment Islam takes a holistic view of life in totality in which the period we spend on the earth is only a very small part. The majority of our life will be spent in the hereafter, after we die. And it is only on the day of judgment that final success will be determined. The one who is spared from the hellfire and entered into Jannah will be successful. This is our fundamental belief without which a person cannot be Muslim. Therefore, anything that is prescribed in Islam is with the presumption that it is good for us in this life and in the hereafter. And where we are forced to choose between the two, then naturally and logically as people who believe in the hereafter, in the Akhirah, 
we choose that over this life since that period is forever and permanent whereas this life is temporary so progress is that which will help us in the hereafter and not that which may feel good in this life but destroys our hereafter every decision a muslim may, takes must therefore answer the question is this good for the hereafter if it is the muslim will do it if not he will not do it and if he is not sure he will not he will not do it until he can clarify to his satisfaction in a beautiful hadith in tirmidhi qala hasan ibn ali radiyallahu anhuma qala rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam da'a ma yaribuka ila ma la yaribuka fa inna as-sidq tumaniyatan tumaniyatan wa inna al-kadhiba ribatan Hassan ibn Ali radiyallahu anhuma the grandson of Rasulullah sallallahu said reported that Rasulullah sallallahu his grandfather said leave what makes you doubt for what does not make you doubt leave the uncertain for the certain verily truth brings peace of mind and falsehood sows doubt and this hadith is in tirmidhi now therein lies the safety for the believer to leave the doubtful for that which is not doubtful to leave the doubtful for the certain as an example a child studying for a qualifying exam a person studying for a qualifying exam to get into medical school may be tempted may want to spend time with his friends watching soccer but if he has any intelligence he will not do that because though watching soccer is enjoyable if it results in his failing in the medical college entrance exam he would have lost his opportunity to become a doctor progress for this child for this person must be measured in the context of their long term goal of becoming a doctor nobody and not by whether he or she is having fun today so also a muslim's progress must be measured by the metrics of success that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us and said kullu nafsin zaiqatul maut wa inna ma tuwaffawna wujuhakum yawm al qiyama fa man zuhziha 'an an nari wa udkhila al jannata faqad faz wa ma al hayatu ad dunya illa mata al qulub allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said every soul will taste death and you will only receive your full reward on the day of judgment whoever is spared from the fire and is admitted into jannah will indeed triumph will indeed be successful whereas the life of this world is no more than the delusion of enjoyment therefore when someone says that we are being held back from progress because we cannot take interest based loans we must define what we mean by progress and whether interest based loans are the only means of finance available to anyone who wants to make investments it is not progress to get some benefit in life which you would be forced to leave behind and in the process destroy our akhirah and it is not true that loans are the only form of finance available to people who want to start a business or do some other activity anyone who does a little bit of research can discover that one of the most common and popular ways to raise funds is through venture capital which is halal in islam and encouraged there are too many success stories of successful businesses started by entrepreneurs partnering with venture capitalists for me to mention here but you can do your own research i suggest you watch a program called shark tank which is a live show about entrepreneurs pitching for venture capital to fund their startups incidentally i have never seen a muslim pitching for any business on this show 
Of course, I have not watched every episode and I will be delighted to be proven wrong. Venture capital is halal and starting a business with venture capital has many other benefits, which I won't go into here, but believe me, they are there. To come to the command about riba, about interest-based dealings, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala declared riba to be haram clearly and, uh, and unequivocally. Unequivocally. There are many kinds of riba, but the most common is where a person lends money to another or borrows money from another and gives or receives more than he lent or borrowed. And that extra is in proportion to what was lent or borrowed. To clarify it further, it's not the extra amount itself, but that it is a percentage of what was borrowed, which makes it interest. Just an additional amount, if it is expected, is still riba, but not interest. It is not my in intention to go into all the kinds of riba here, but just to clarify the most common form, which we all know, and that is interest on loans. So in other words, all form of interest are riba, but not all forms of riba are interest. Another important point. <clears throat> to understand is that Islam prohibits the transaction itself. Irrespective of who it is between, whether it's between two individuals, between an individual and an organization like a bank, between uh, two organizations uh, or two countries or anything else, they are all haram and banned in Islam. There can be no, about, no doubt about this prohibition. Nothing has been prohibited as severely as interest. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala declared war on behalf of himself and his messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam on anyone who deals in interest in any shape or form. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the famous ayat of Surah Al-Baqarah, الَّذِينَ يَأْكُلُونَ الرِّبَا لَا يَقُومُونَ إِلَّا كَمَا يَقُومُ الَّذِي يَتَخَبَّطُهُ الشَّيْطَانُ مِنَ الْمَسِ ذَلِكَ بِأَنَّهُمْ قَالُوا إِنَّمَا الْبَيْعُ مِثْلُ الرِّبَا وَأَحَلَّ اللَّهُ الْبَيْعَ وَحَرَّمَ الرِّبَا فَمَنْ جَاءَهُ مَعِزَةٌ مِنْ رَبِّهِ فَانْتَهَا فَلَهُ مَا صَلَفَ وَأَمْرُهُ إِلَى اللَّهِ وَمَنْ عَادَ فَأُولَئِكَ أَصْحَابُ النَّارِ هُمْ فِيهَا خَالِدُونَ يَمْحَقُ اللَّهُ الرِّبَا وَيُرْبِ الصَّدَقَاتِ وَاللَّهُ لَا يُحِبُّ كُلَّ كَفَّارٍ أَثِيمٍ يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا اتَّقُوا اللَّهَ وَذَرُوا مَا بَقِيَ مِنَ الرِّبَا إِن كُنْتُمْ مُؤْمِنِينَ فَإِن لَّمْ تَفْعَلُوا فَأَذَنُوا بِحَرْبٍ مِّنَ اللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ وَإِن تُبْتُمْ فَلَكُمْ رُؤُوسُ أَمْوَالِكُمْ لَا تَظْلِمُونَ وَلَا تُظْلَمُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in Surah Al-Baqarah Those who consume interest will stand on judgment day like those driven to madness by shaitan's touch. That is because they say trade is no different from interest. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has permitted trading and forbidden interest. Whoever refrains from, after having received warning from their Rabb, may keep their previous gains and their case is left to Allah. As for those who persist, it is they who will be the residents of the fire. They will be there forever. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made interest fruitless and charity fruitful. And Allah does not like any ungrateful evildoer. O believers, fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and give up outstanding interest. If you are true believers, if you do not, then beware of war with Allah and His Messenger. But if you repent, you may retain your principle. Do not do wrong and you will not be wronged. We can see from this ayah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made it a condition of Iman. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made it a condition of Iman itself. 
that we must not deal in riba, which of course includes interest. What more needs to be said? And for those who need more emphasis, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala declared war on behalf of Rasulullah and himself on those who refuse to give up dealing in interest. Jabir and Jabirin radiallahu anhu qala la'ana Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam akila riba wa mawkilahu wa katibahu wa shahidayhi wa qala hum sawa Jabir said that Rasulullah cursed the acceptor of interest and its payer, the one who pays it, and the one who records that transaction, and the two witnesses of that transaction. And he said they are all equal. Now, that is the clearest statement that anyone can ask for. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for his guidance and mercy so that when we meet him, it will be, inshallah, our finest day. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to, be, to help us to stay on the right path leading to his pleasure and not get sidetracked and misled by anyone else because we have the Quran and we have the teachings of Rasulullah to guide us. And there is nothing that is superior to that.